Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in and welcome to this special edition of Nikon Live. My name is Mike Carrado, your host, and we've got three great guests here today. We're going to talk to you about the Nikon Z50 mirrorless camera that we just recently introduced. We are having great times right now, and introducing a new product is always so exciting. We have uh, with us today Senior Manager of Product Marketing, Mark Cutler. Um, you. And you're going to talk to us about the ins and outs of the camera and who it's targeted to. And we also have two very special artists here, photographers, directors, uh, Dixie Dixon from Fort Worth, Texas, <laughs> and Sean Corrigan from the Los Angeles area coming into the East Coast, what we call the right coast here. <laughs> and um, you two have both had the special opportunity to be the first on the block to actually shoot with the Z50. And later on in the program, we're going to talk about your assignments, some of the pictures you made, and some of the things you love about the camera. But uh, I really want to get started, Mark, because the camera gets launched. You and I have been here for a long time at Nikon. A lot of misinformation goes out there, and that's part of why we're having this broadcast, to make sure we give the straight skinny on this camera and people get it right, right? Absolutely. So let's start off by, who is the DC, uh, Z750? Uh, <laughs> here we go. What, who, <laughs> is, who is this amazing camera, the Z50 targeted to? So New mirrorless <laughs> camera. <laughs> I'll get it. So this is the Nikon uh, Z50. Uh, it is the third camera in the Z system, and it's the first to have a DX sensor in it. And um, because it has a DX sensor, it makes it extremely portable, but it also has great image quality. In terms of the customer, this can appeal to a wide variety of customers. Mm -hmm. So if you're a traditional shooter, photo or video, maybe you have a Z7, Z6, maybe you have a DSLR, um, this is a great like portable type of camera. So lightweight, on the fly, perfect camera for anybody who loves photography or video. Absolutely. But on the other end of the spectrum, we've done a lot of research and we've learned that there is a growing user base of people who may not be traditional photographers or videographers, mm -hmm. but they uh, may be content creators or they may have businesses, small businesses, they may be cake makers, they may, or they may be vloggers, or whatever it may be, or they, they just love to travel. They're storytellers, right? They love to tell There's stories about their lives, but they may not be making the big print for the gallery. Exactly. They're storytellers, they, they, they're motivated by Instagram or social media. Mm -hmm. um, those people, um, they're, they're is, this is the type of camera that they'd want to put in their hands. It makes a lot of sense because billions of pictures are taken every day, just about, right? And they're shared and they're transmitted or they're posted on some kind of social site. So it's nice to have a camera in the line now that's easy for people to use. Um, just to turn it over to Dixie and Sean real quick, you both had an opportunity to use the camera. I don't want to delve into your assignments just yet, but Dixie, what was your first impression on the assignment we worked on together? Oh my gosh, I am obsessed with this camera. Um, it was really hard after I worked with the prototype to send it back because mm -hmm. it's just a camera that I want to take with me everywhere. The ergonomics are amazing. It only weighs 14 ounces, mm -hmm. the body. So it's like you throw it in your bag and you can take it everywhere. I remember I, the first time I handed mighty. it. Yeah, the first yeah. time I handed it to you, you were like, oh my God, this is so light. It's incredible. Yeah, and that's, that's a great thing when you're traveling around all day. So, Sean, you got a great assignment from Nikon Corp. Um, when they put it in your hands for the first time, what was your feeling? Oh my god, it was the prototype. I was so scared. I was like, there's two of these in the world. Don't drop it, Sean. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it is an everyday camera, everyday carry for me. It's, it's light. It can go in your bag. You can always have it with you. And it just, it just feels so natural to always have on you. Mm -hmm. it's, and that's what I want. I want something that's just always there. Now, Mark, I'm going to bring it back to you. Uh, you've had this camera for a long time, since the inception. And then you roll through all kinds of iterations of studying the camera and learning about the camera. When we introduced the Z line, the Z50 now has come out with the same 55 millimeter lens mount. Talk about why that's important, even for a camera that's got a DX sensor. Yeah, so as you know, with the Z6 and the Z7, the, the 55 millimeter mount allows you to have edge to edge sharpness, um, and also it allows you to focus close to the corners. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that, that the DX, uh, that is applied to this camera right. as well. But in addition to that, um, you're also able to let in more light. Mm -hmm. um, we can also, um, in terms of technology, this uh, th with the lenses, you're able to now um, make lenses that have the rear element close to the sensor. Right. And Very having important. it closer to the sensor means that your lenses are higher resolution. Mm -hmm. So even the kit lenses, and it's amazing that this is what a kit lens is today, um, even the kit lenses perform in higher resolution and higher quality. Right. I, I have not had a chance to really go out there and shoot it and test it, but you guys did, Dixie and Sean, 
quality, sharp, colorful, what, what's the deal? What, what's your true assessment? The edge to edge sharpness is uncomparable in any other kit lens I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It is just, you, you're a skeptic to start. You're like, oh yeah. And then you get it out there and you're using it and you're like, oh no. Like, not only are you saying that, it, it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel? Oh my gosh, I loved it. The, um, the video that this camera renders, as you found, it was incredibly beautiful. I'd shoot a lot of slow motion videos for fashion photography and portraits and I was just blown away by how the features come to life in this beautiful color and vibrancy and mm -hmm. it's incredible. So Mark, you just held up a second lens. So this camera body is actually being introduced with two new DX Nikkor, yeah. Z Nikkor lenses, correct? Yep, so you have the, um, the 16 to 50 millimeter um, and you can see it's amazing how small we're able to make a 16 to 50 millimeter mm -hmm. here. Um, on top of that, you have a 50 to 250. So you have no gaps between the range when you have both these. And when you pair them, they're so small, you can just throw them in a bag um, and, and the quality is phenomenal. So essentially we're saying, you know, here's a camera, here are these two lenses. Really, uh, we'd love for you to buy every lens in our arsenal, but that's all you really need to go out and shoot everything from wide angle landscapes to telephoto, wildlife, portraits, whatever it is you're into. Yeah, it'll get you started and so much more. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no slouch, it's a 20.9 it's a megapixel camera. Yes, so uh, it's a 20.9 uh, 20 megapixel DX camera. Um, that sensor is among the higher end of, of sensors in the DX line. So uh, make no mistake about it, the image quality of this is, is will definitely satisfy someone even a, as a higher end shooter. So when we talked a little bit about this new customer segment, you know, the person that's maybe graduating from a small device, um, let's talk a little bit about this flip screen. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so the camera has a, um, uh, basically it's a tilt screen here, but what's new to it is that it'll flip all the way underneath. And this is great, um, especially if you're, if, if you're blogging or um, you just want to take selfies. Mm -hmm. uh, you flip it into this mode, the camera automatically shuts off features that you might hit and fumble with. And uh, you can just take a quick shot. You can even tap the screen to focus. So it's somewhat um, bulletproof in that mode. It's bulletproof. And of course and the and orientation shows you the correct orientation when it flips underneath. So it actually reverses yep. the image so you see yourself normal. So whether you're making pictures of yourself uh, in a location or shooting video, um, maybe walking on the street trying to talk to your social audience, yep. uh, you got a nice combination there for uh, still images and, and video. Dixie, do you do a lot of this stuff? Are you turn the camera back <laughs> on yourself? I try not to. <laughs> but however, when I was shooting this assignment, uh, we sort of empowered the models to do some of the shooting because we wanted them to be vloggers mm -hmm. and you know doing different kinds of videos. And they loved the camera. I thought that was kind of a testament to you can put this into the hands of anyone and they're able to pick it up instantly and create really amazing content. Yeah. And that's what I think this, this camera really strives. And to clarify, the assignment we brought to you was not only to shoot with the camera, but mm -hmm. it was contextual, you know, putting yes. people in the right environment to show what the target audience could be you right. know, for the camera outside of our core audience we talked about of photographers. Mm -hmm. But you, Sean, you got a special assignment where you got to shoot the end result mm -hmm. and you got to create a video. And we're going to talk about both of those things uh, as well. Let's go through a few more of the features. I definitely want to get to the art that you guys created because it's stunning. Uh, in fact, Mark, you're quite the photographer yourself, only in the ranks of a dad photographing <laughs> his children, right? Having fun. <laughs> we'll get to that. Higher than that, for sure. <laughs> in a little bit. <laughs> I've seen your work. It's pretty darn good, and people here are going to see it as well. But. Um, one of the technologies that we introduced into the Z series uh, through a firmware update, the Z6 and Z7, now is employed in the Z50, uh, which is IAF. Talk about IAF and how important that is. IAF is, is definitely a, um, a game changer in this type of, of camera because what, what's happening now, well, first I should say this. We uh, put the IAF in the Z6 and Z7 a couple months ago mm -hmm. uh, to huge fanfare. Um, what happened there is that we have facial recognition already in the mm -hmm. camera. Yep. So what's happening now is we're isolating just the eye. Right. Um, so we're really just tacking on to technology we've, we've always had. Um, putting it on the eye allows, allows us to also, um, allows the camera to be able to go from eye to eye mm -hmm. and to be able to shift from, from person to person. So there, if there are multiple people in the shot, it'll recognize four eyes in the shot. How does the user know that's happening? Uh, well, there's a box that'll go around the eye and then there's an arrow and it'll tell you which direction the camera is 
telling you, hey, do you want to go to, to that eye or this eye? And you can press the button on Or on this back. person or that person. Or this person or that person. So if there are multiple person. people in the photo. Yeah, it's real intuitive. Uh, Dixie, yeah. I know, again, we're talking a little more high-end. We talk about your portrait fashion work. But yeah, absolutely. How important are the eyes to I mean, the eyes in, in the picture for fashion photography and portraits really is everything. I think the eyes are the window that to the soul. And this camera just makes it incredibly easy where I can focus on the connection and the eye is constantly you know, it's moving focus. The camera is doing it all automatically for you. So I think that as a photographer, it's really empowering because mm -hmm. then you can just create and, and shoot these amazing images without having to toggle and be, you know, cognizant of that. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I know subject tracking and video is so important. Um, did you feel like you used that tool a lot, Sean? I think the subject tracking the video is phenomenal on the camera. And when you come to the phase detection system, which it has instead of our DSLRs, which had the contrast based, it's like night and day. It works so good. It, it tracks your subject so well. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you can do is you can set the threshold for the tracking speed. Mm. So, you know, I don't want it to be jumpy, and that's what we used to experience in DSLR. But now with mirrorless, we get a smooth transition. I want to go from you to me in this. Yeah. It's going to do that, and I can set that threshold. And we found that um, incredibly useful in our video project. So, for two seasoned professionals, it's great to be able to have that control. But Mark, the beauty of this is someone that doesn't really know much about photography, just set it and go, really. Absolutely. And I mean, I mean, I, I even saw it in your shoot with the, with, with the vlogger example. Yeah, absolutely. She picked it up, just went with it, and you know, there was really no learning curve to that. I mean, you just set it and go. So if somebody wants to learn, they can grow with the camera. If they don't want to learn, just put it on auto, set it on these auto settings, and let it run. I always say that with these types of cameras is that um, you can grow with the camera. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really nice thing. Um, there's really no limit to what you can do, but the starting point is so easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's available to you in the simplest form. So the word crop, right? We're talking about the DX sensor as a crop sensor, meaning it's cropped from full frame. Sure. Of course, that creates a lot of chaos for people that really just don't understand the technology. And some yes. of the mistakes out of the gate from people in understanding the 4K video in this camera is actually shooting the full DX sensor here, right? Absolutely. It's not it's not cropping in multiple times like other systems. It is actually shooting right off that full sensor. Explain that to everybody. Absolutely. Well, first of all, y you put a DX sensor into a camera like this so that you can get that smaller size, so that you can be more portable uh, and more nimble, um, and to be able to get the, the smaller lenses on top of that. Um, but when it comes to video, there's no cropping in 4K. There's no cropping in... in in slow motion. So I, I should tell you this about video. Video, you have uh, 4K UHD at 30p. You also have other, you have 24p as well, but you have slow motion, which shoots basically 120p. Um, you also have nor uh, 1080p at 120, mm -hmm. um, which is really nice because if you want to shoot in that mode, you get super smooth video. And in post-production, you have the leverage to go and, and do something like speed ramping, where you're kind of playing with, with the time of when that, that video is going slow motion, regular, or somewhere in between. See, my, I can tell you right now, I do not have the video skills of Sean Corrigan. I just <laughs> do not. And one of the things I found, and I, I love wildlife, is when I was using the Z6, uh, was actually using the 5X slow-mo mode so I didn't have to worry about post-production processing. I don't know anything about that <laughs> stuff. I admit it, I am a still photographer, but I love motion pictures. And I went out and, and photographed uh, recorded birds in flight, and I did in 5X, and it's just something about slow motion, man, that just gets everybody. And I'd like to believe it's because we stop these moments and times, we slow them down so you can see more details. But just a really cool factor, right? Um, Sean, talk a little bit about how, I guess I, a lot of people shoot in 4K, but they transmit at 1080 or whatever the deal. Talk about 4K, how important is that to you? To me, I think 4K is really important. And what 4K allows me to do in the way I create video is make some decisions after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some room we can crop in. I capture this whole moment, but you know what? Really, I think this is the moment that happens here. I'm able to go in there. I can make it vertical. I have a lot of versatility. And what you just said about slow motion made me think about it. You know when you're having a moment and you just like, all the details are there, mm -hmm. and it's because you're sharing this moment? I think being able to shoot in slow motion allows us to share those moments that we have personally with other people. Because I know when I'm having, I'm taking a picture and this scene, 
everything is happening so slowly for me because I'm so in tune, but it may not be happening for you like that. But being able to show you in slow motion mm -hmm. lets me translate that very personal experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I love the slow motion. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like you have to, most people rig up their cameras for video. Is there a lot that you add to this to kind of work with it in video? I am or the exact opposite. I want l as little as possible. Mm -hmm. I just want to have this, you know, we'll put a little microphone on top of it and I come makes a great little microphone and that's it. And I think as you'll see when we get to watch the video we created later is this camera is like you just hand it to anybody. So there'll be times and you're like, in our video, the perspective changes. And that's because I handed the camera to a skater and then she's filming her friend and then her friend's filming her. Mm -hmm. And then they're coming back to my perspective when we film them. And it's just so simple. Everybody, you hood it to them, you hand it to them, mm -hmm. like, oh, easy. So I do, mm -hmm. you know? So with that simple thought in mind, Mark, delve in a little bit. Each of these new lenses has VR built in. Yes. And vibration reduction is so critical, as we know, for slow shutter speeds when you're trying to handhold the camera. It's equally as important to video. Talk about VR in this system. Absolutely. So VR, as you said, is built into the two kit lenses. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this lens uh, has 4.5 stops of VR. And the 50 to 250 does five stops. Five stops is the most we've ever had in an interchangeable lens, mm -hmm. Nikkor um, uh, lens. Um, it's so important, especially for low light. And this camera does mm -hmm. great in low light. Um, the ISO goes up to 51,200. Nice. Um, <laughs> which, you know, uh, the, it, it all plays into the sensor and also the processor. <laughs> so you have the X-Speed, you have X-Speed 6 in this. And that's why, um, that's why you're going to get superior image quality out of a, a few reasons. Why you're going to get superior image quality out of this DX camera, this mm -hmm. mirrorless DX camera, than you've seen in other DX uh, cameras before. The X-Speed 6 allows for um, uh, it, it allows for better uh, resolution in video and ISO performance, clarity, and sharpness. In essence, if I were to sum that up, you know, in a very simple way. X-Speed is the brains of the camera. Absolutely, yeah. It deals with the color. It deals with 11 frames per second. It deals with the video, as you said. Uh, it's the brains. It's the smarts. It's yep. the things that I don't even know. And the muscle. That yeah. it's doing within yeah. milliseconds that, uh, that is somewhat out of our control. Um, interesting, moving forward, uh, so we can get to these great assignments that you guys worked on. Communication, sharing images is a huge part of everybody's life every day. We all do it, right? I don't know that there's a day it doesn't go by I don't share an image to somebody in a text or, or whatnot. Let's talk a little bit about what's built into the camera to allow you to share your images very quickly with a smart device. Yep, so it's got um, Bluetooth pairing and it's got Wi-Fi inside. And this is part of the SnapBridge system. It uses SnapBridge 2.5, which is an app you can get on iOS or Android. I use it religiously. Um, Basically, you can pair not just the one camera, but you can pair up to five cameras. So if you have a Z6, a Z7, a D850, th most of our cameras that are available today are on the same platform. Mm -hmm. um, the pairing is super simple. You do it once, it stays there, and then you just transfer images. You can automatically set it to transfer, mm -hmm. or you can manually select. I manually select. It's easier for me to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Before I move on, familiarity. Yep. as you're using one camera to the next. Um, I want you guys to chime in, Dixie and Sean, about the touch screen and the menu system within the camera. Did it look foreign to you, or did it look like something you've seen before? Oh, for me, it was completely seamless. Mm -hmm. Just the menus, everything is easy to navigate. I think mm -hmm. that's where Nikon really excels, especially in the menu system. And um, yeah, I completely think it's a great sidekick to like your Z6 or Z7 because it feels the same except it's a lot lighter. Any stumbling blocks, Sean, for you? No, I think something that Nikon really cares about is the user experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any difference in the user experience between this, you know, the Z7, Z6, totally. 850. It, it's seamless across the board, which I think really streaks, speaks strongly to, you know, how the brand thinks about us using it. And you guys both come from the world of DSLR. Talk a little bit about what it's like to make the transition to the electronic viewfinder and why did you feel about this? Because I know Z6, Z7, sharpest, best color, edge to edge sharpness within Absolutely. the viewfinder. I mean, for me to make that transition was a big leap and it's it, that have that faith in knowing that sharpness and color, not to mention accuracy is there. And I, can, I, I set my cameras up now, do everything from the buttons in the front. I don't ever have to take my eye away, making changes, change settings, playback, zoom in. You can do all that. But 
transition to an optical viewfinder, uh, from an optical viewfinder to the electronic viewfinder, how did that work for you? Yeah, for me, I was skeptical um, mm -hmm. when switching over to the new viewfinder, but I found that like for people starting out and getting into photography, this mirrorless system is, is like a dream because you can instantly see when you change things like ISO, shutter speed, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you instantly see it in the back of the camera so they understand what's going on when you change these settings. So I think it's amazing. I've gotten so used to it now when I don't have it, it feels like I'm missing something. Yeah, one of the other things it's yeah. taught me to be is just a straight manual shooter too Absolutely. because what you see is what you get in the mm -hmm. exposure. You see it before it happens. <laughs> Sean, anything to add to that? I, I will never go back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went back the I other day. A lot day of people feel the same way. And um, yeah. I overexposed an image. I was like, what am I doing? It's like, oh, it's not actually, you know? I didn't have yeah. to do that. I know. I it's didn't have to shoot raw and game back two yeah. stops in, in <laughs> post. I think where it's really saved me is my eyes. I love shooting sun flares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at the sun is dangerous. Mm -hmm. But with a mirrorless, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And you can see what that flare is actually doing. So, Mark as these uh, electronic viewfinders are built, the Z50 shares the same technologies as the higher end cameras in the line Z6 and Z7, correct? Yep, and it's got Nikon glass mm -hmm. inside. So there are elements, uh, we've actually built a lens into that system yep. to make it brighter, more colorful, accurate, Natural. and sharp than anything that's out there. And yep. I, I remember seeing the decks on this. We have these technical technology decks that come in and it's critical, the edge to head sharpness is just as important when you're viewing the image through the uh, uh, electronic viewfinder as it is that sharpness on that end result image or, sure. or video that you have. So now we start talking about the art. We're going to shift gears a little bit. And, <laughs> and, and don't mind, uh, I don't mind if you inject the technology along the way or things that you've done, especially lenses and settings. Um, I do think it's important to state before we move on, other Z lenses work with this camera as well. Yes. The mount is the mount, right? Not just Z lenses, but also F-mount lenses if you use the adapter, mm -hmm. the F-easy adapter. And, and in reality, though, we really expect more people to just stick with the, the, the two lenses, yep. the DX lenses that have come out. Yes, you can mount the FTZ. So if you, if you are advanced like you guys and you want to use an older lens, you could shift that over to uh, the Z50. You may also see a lot of people interested in the 35mm 1.8 or the 50 1.8 as The Z well. lenses, and right. And it's, it's a crop mm -hmm. factor, so your 50 1.8 becomes a 75mm. So which is the same which thing for these lenses, portraits. right? So your 16 to 50 is more like a 24 to 75 when you look yes, at it in photo yeah. terms of focal length. Okay, so dad, I'm going <laughs> to call you dad. <laughs> I've had the great pleasure of photographing your kids yes. um, while your dog has jumped on my back, <laughs> um, while your son's running around with a hammer hitting and me in the head. Taking out of your bag. Um, <laughs> but uh, you've had an opportunity to work with the camera as uh, a product manager. You take it out in the field, you test it, right? Yep. And your subjects are your children. So we're going to look at a few of the pictures uh, that you created. Just talk a little bit about it as Dad the photographer. Sure. Uh, well, I will say that, um, so I took my kids to a, to a very quiet park nearby uh, where I live, and, and I can tell you, it, the, the camera, what this camera did for me, I usually will walk out with the Z6, but what this camera did for me is it gave me the ability to be nimble, and, and not just because of its size, but also because of how easy it is to switch um, to switch from feature to feature. I do a lot of switching from photos to video. I do a lot of switching creative controls. Maybe I want to go in black and white. Maybe I want to try one of the others. Um, but that ability to just just slip in in front of my kids while they just play. I try not to interrupt them while they're playing. I try to let them play and just try to get images as, as they go along. Um, it was just so seamless. It was so easy to do and I felt like I because of the size and, and, and the functionality being so easy, uh, I was getting shots that I normally wouldn't have gotten. And um, when you're prepping up for this, this camera takes SD cards? This takes SD cards, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the SD cards uh, work really great. It's, it's so as, as now you're, you're the dad, so you're probably what, using subject tracking, 11 frames per second, kids running around the park are not the easiest to photograph. They're and not you got the some easiest. You got some really great, great results. Thank you. Ah, Sean. Talk to me, Sean. I think it's got to be a bit of a, a great day when a company calls you and says, we have an assignment for you. Uh, talk a little bit about it. You get a call from Nikon Corp. What do they say? It's the best day. Your phone rings, and you're like, <coughs> hello. And I'm like, Sean, we have a new camera. We can't tell you much about it, but we want you to be part of the project. 
What is your dream assignment? We like yeah. to keep you in the dark, by the way. It's <laughs> just more of a challenge we'll that way. We'll tell you as little as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's super top secret. We're going to use code words the whole time. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And how do you see this? So they ask you for ideas, and you pitch two of the ideas that we're going to see today. Talk a little bit about those projects and where you went. Okay, so when I learned about the specs of the camera, I was like, this camera will be great to just like show the way we hang out with our friends. Mm -hmm. And the two ideas I had were, let's go down to Mexico and shoot some surfing and hang out, and then let's go shoot some skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do is get around creative people and let us all be creative together and just inspire each other and use this camera as a vehicle to navigate that creativity. So Mexico, if I understand this correctly, was more of a still shoot where you're shooting still images and we're going to get to at the end see the skateboarding thing that you had some friends, um, some young ladies that, uh, that you recorded, they're avid skateboarders and like you said before, you handed one a camera and we'll, we'll see that video um, before uh, long. But uh, let's, let's go to some of your pictures. And some of the things you did, I mean, beautiful lightning weather shot. I mean, people dream of having a nice lightning shot. Talk a little bit about it and what lens did you use and uh, how you set the camera up. Oh, my gosh. So throughout this assignment, we had a list of images, like hero images that we get. Or like, we're just like, okay, let's show these features. <clears throat> and one of the things is edge edge sharpness. And I was waking up early, and I saw this thunderstorm, and I was like, I really want to sleep but let me go to the beach and get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, have all this doubt in my mind because it's raining and I have a prototype camera. But what is so great about this is it's so small. I'm like, whatever, I'll grab a little umbrella, I'm gonna go sit on the beach, mm -hmm. and we're gonna see what happens. And this is just one of those magical moments. Like, it's so dark. You can't tell how dark it is in the photo because the lightning bolt lights up the sky, but you just set the ISO all the way up, you punch in, you focus on infinity, you sit there in your tripod and you just start taking pictures. So you needed a tripod, obviously, because it's a longer exposure. Yeah, well, this, I think this is, um, gosh, uh, I'd have to look at the map, but I would say this is like at least a handful of seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just one of those moments where it's like the mirrorless is really complimenting you here mm -hmm. because you were able to punch in to find your focus on infinity. And, you know, the lightning just does its thing. We, um, we are the benefit benefactors of when you guys go out and shoot these images, they make it to our desks at some point, right, Mark? And <laughs> your use of color is tremendous. I'm, I'm a big fan of the way you work in color. Uh, talk a little bit about this hat shot. How did you shoot this? Um, this is just one of those moments that I like to try to find a situation where things are going to happen organically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then me and Effie were walking down the street. And we're in Mexico. Mexico is very vibrant. Mm -hmm. And we see this hat. And I was like, we need to buy that hat. Because mm -hmm. I know there's a red wall up here. Right. And that was it. And we're just we're waiting around, and she's just naturally holding the hat like that. And I'm just like, everyday care. It's just the camera you always have. And you're just like, oh, I need to take that picture. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't what you planned to take, right. but it's what you took along the way to what you planned, mm -hmm. which I think is when the magic happens a lot for me. That's what we call happy accidents <laughs> you know, in our world of shooting. But uh, Effie, is Effie the subject that's about to come up that you pose through the leaves? And uh, no, this is a, a different one. This is Carolina. Gotcha, um, Carolina. And what I did is, in Mexico, I just found a group of friends because I think things happen organically. Mm -hmm. So I knew a couple people down there, and I was like, hey, who's in town? Let's find a group of people that are all friends, mm -hmm. and let's go out and just create some pictures together. Mm -hmm. um, so the, yeah, one of the things I like to do in talking about this shot through the greenery here is I love looking through things. I like to try to find these hidden moments, mm -hmm. like this magical moment. If I was about to take a picture of you, Mike, I'd be hiding behind that plant behind you, mm -hmm. <laughs> looking for it's you. It's my plant. <laughs> it, it, it accentuates me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's what this moment is for me. It's just like her boyfriend's making her laugh. I'm probably trying to like tell him something to make her and just make that moment. And then here's this great moment. And then the next picture, I'm photographing Diego, her boyfriend, and she's just in the window looking down at us. And we look up. And it's another one of those magic moments. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that's a picture. She just tips her head back. Yeah. And, I mean, the light is so beautiful. And, and the choice of black and white is so cool. And, and Mark, one of the great things, we have something in this camera called picture control, right? Yeah. So you can be a black and white artist. You can be a color artist. You can add saturation in certain modes. Talk a little bit about picture control. Yeah, the picture controls are great because, and, and we put a lot of emphasis or a, a lot of work into making these picture controls. Um, they not only are they great to 
apply. But if you shoot in raw, you can always adjust them later on. You can you can change them out and swap them around. So uh, or or get your natural picture back. Um, but the picture controls, y y you hit a button and then you just th it's there's nothing to it. And I the 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 beauty of the picture controls is when you're looking through this viewfinder, this electronic viewfinder, you're seeing it happen in front of you. So you can actually um, experiment right on the fly. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'd shoot differently because you're just applying these filters in real time. So as cool, these to filters. So many different things, yeah, right? Yeah. As opposed to in post, which is what naturally happens when people put filters on stuff. It's usually mm -hmm. happening later on. And the good news is, to take it back to the sharing part, the more you can do in camera, the easier it is to get that image to your phone. Yes. So you can send it out to any of the social pages very quickly. And it happens quickly. in a moment with the... And the beauty of that is you have a high resolution image that you can print, yes. right? That's a really great quality. I mean, over 20 megapixels is pretty solid. Yep. And of course, have that lower res image that you can post to social, which is really cool. But back to the artist of the day of the moment, <laughs> Sean. Um, Let's talk a little bit about how you now approach the video part of this project. And where did you shoot the video? And, and how do you just start to put it together? I am not a video guy, so I guess you have to storyboard in your brain or on a piece of paper. You have to figure out all your shots of what you're going to try and do. How do you do this? I thought best day ever. <laughs> There's These girls are awesome. They are such amazing skateboarders. And I wanted to just tell the story of what the best day for them looks like. Mm -hmm. You know? and kind of comically in our video, you wake up next to your skateboard, you wake them up, you go out, you pick all your homies up, and you just go have fun. Mm -hmm. And to me this is, it feels like what I want to spend every day doing. Mm -hmm. Like if I could spend every day going out with my friends and taking right. pictures and having fun, that's what I would do. Uh, and I feel like I get to do a lot of that being a photographer. Uh, and in this case, I got to spend the day with these awesome people doing that. Mm -hmm. And you see it, they're having fun. They're filming themselves. They're incredible athletes. And the camera doesn't break that down. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like to work with a really small piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. Because I think it allows on authenticity to come through. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have some big video camera. We just have this little thing that feels, uh, you know, small but mighty. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's tiny, so I'm not intimidated by it. But it's making great stuff. Yeah, you it takes know. some small but mighty. You came up with that one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. You it talked really about it in rehearsal, and I cut you off earlier, but <laughs> you were saying small and mighty. But it is. It's, it's it packed is. with a lot of punch. In fact, uh, you know, I mean, you, you could say, Mark, it was, the sensor itself was inspired by uh, the D500, right? One of our more advanced well, it's cameras. It's, it's inspired by high-end DSLRs, for mm -hmm. sure. But mm -hmm. the other thing I wanted to say, to Sean's point, is the silent photography aspect mm -hmm. of things. Sure. And I think that's so important because if you want to kind of disappear, um, shooting at, you know, in silent is, is really the way to, to do that. And it makes you more comfortable. It makes people in front of you more comfortable. Certainly um, one of the benefits of mirrorless technology. One of the benefits. Mm -hmm. So we got a couple of other shots, uh, Sean. <laughs> Uh, two stills that you shot uh, in skateboarding, fascinating <laughs> geometry, shapes. I mean, talk a little bit about these and how you shot them. Which lens did you use? Did you use the 16 to 50 on this? Yeah. Uh, so this one is a 16 to 50. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I slept a ladder out to the skate park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I stood on the very top of it. And I wanted to find... Safely a stood on the top. <laughs> Safely <laughs> stood on the top of it <laughs> under expert supervision. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I wanted to find a unique perspective to play with the light and shadow mm -hmm. and the shapes of the day. And that was something that I was really inspired by throughout the process of making these images in Los Angeles. Um, so yeah, I thought this is just like almost a bird's eye view. And it's just one of those things. You hold the camera up to get higher, you flip the screen down, and you can just see what you're doing. So the flip screen in action is something really important. Totally. And the AF. You know, mm -hmm. just the AF tracking through the flip screen. Right. It's I'm um, standing on the ladder. I'm holding it above my head, mm -hmm. looking up. You know. And just shooting away. Yeah. Letting the camera do what it wants to. And then it looks like you took them out on the street. Or yeah. Uh, look like it looks like underpass. Uh, so you have another photo here. Underpass, and this is the same, same kind of thing. The opposite end. I'm not holding it up. I'm on the ground, but I don't have to lay on the ground. Mm -hmm. The DSLR days, I love shooting low. I always have to lay on the ground. Mm -hmm. You don't always want to lay on the ground. Right. So <laughs> this is great. You just flip the screen up. You get it low. You can get a really cool perspective that you otherwise wouldn't get. I try to think of the mantra. It's like, 
shoot high and shoot low. We mm -hmm. all see at eye level, so let's look at the world in different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So for me, a lot of the times it's getting low or it's getting really tall. And you were just able to do your thing, let the skaters do their thing, and you created a beautiful piece, and I'd like to share that with our audience right now. Let's cue that up and see it's about a minute and 30 of this video. Cool, thank you. That is awesome, <laughs> and I got to tell you, right, right out of the gate, it looked to me as I was sort of looking at this and studying it. You used every feature we've just talked about, from the <laughs> flip screen uh, <laughs> to the simplicity of of handing the camera off to them to let them photograph themselves or record video of themselves. I, I swear to you, I'm inspired now to go find somebody of action and go out and, and shoot with this camera. So, just sum it up. Uh, did the Z50 do what you needed to do? And any anything else? I think the Z50 did. It just blew my mind. It did more than I ever expected it to do. Mm -hmm. I've already pre-ordered one. I've asked for two from corporate. Mm -hmm. They said, get in line. <laughs> um, and like two skateboards. Mm -hmm. like, come on, these girls are just, they just blew my mind what they do. And like, that's the thing is when you have a small camera and you have this set that's not imposing, it just lets people be creative and mm -hmm. do things they normally wouldn't do. They're just gonna get out there and have fun. Right. And for me, that's that's what it's about. Their skateboarding talent is evident, and I, I'd be the guy that does that first dropout and ends up on my back <laughs> right away. <laughs> so a testament to their talent, too, because you bring your talent together with theirs, and that's really cool. But again, I would think maybe not on the same level, anybody can do this stuff, right? You know, I think, yeah. And that's, DSLR, mirrorless cameras, they just democratize things. These girls, they shot half of that video. Mm -hmm. You know, I gave them the camera, they did it. Like, yep. I was there. <laughs> we Amazing we athletes together. and artists. <laughs> exactly. Yep. It's like, we can all do this. And that's why I believe in the creative community. Mm -hmm. It's us all coming together and being creative. And that's why the whole ecosystem, the SnapBridge app is great. Like, we create these pictures. Here, get your phone, download the ones you want. I'll download One the ones I want. Yeah. You're a Z creator. <laughs> 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 um, Dixie, let's get Love into it. your assignment. We give you a call. Technically, yes. Mark and I give you a call. And we your say calls are always <laughs> so funny because you call me and then you say, you cannot ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's the first thing you do? You ask a question. <laughs> and we say, can't answer that question, right. Uh, as Sean mentioned, it's everything's under non-disclosure mm -hmm. and, and we, we then reveal everything to you once you sign our documents and, yes. and you go to town. But your assignment was a little different. You got to shoot with the camera, but that mm -hmm. was somewhat of a sidebar to you actually photographing this product in the hands of customers. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about it. Yeah, it was a really unique project and as you said, it's always the coolest call when you get a call about something new that's not released yet and the, the forms and everything. It's always sure. sort of a, a little bit nerve-wracking but really exciting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we got the camera in my hands, I was just blown away, blown away by how it's like the perfect balance of form and function. Mm -hmm. And it's so user-friendly and easy to use. And what's interesting for me and what we shot it was both contextual, so it's shooting models shooting the cameras, mm -hmm. as well as shooting the camera itself, like slow motion videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so we had a blast on this shoot. I mm -hmm. mean, you guys gave me 
a pretty detailed shot list to mm -hmm. accomplish in a day and a half. So I had a day and a half with the camera. <laughs> so it was fast and furious, but we got some really fun I was going to ask content. you, fast and furious, did the Z50 <laughs> slow you down at all? It did not. Yeah. It did not. Let's, let's look at a couple of pictures from that shoot so yeah. everybody can see what it is you're talking about, the contextual shots, but Absolutely. a nice couple sitting on the side. You pick some really cool locations with a lot yeah. of color. And we, I love your palette, your color palette for we this assignment. We had to get a lot of color because I think this camera really excels in that area and also using picture control to play with the different filters and things like that. Um, but really the pictures that I created with the camera were really set to show what you know, someone just on the street could go out and shoot. We didn't use any additional lighting or anything mm -hmm. like that. We wanted to keep our crew really small and compact. And you know, normally we have to get all these location releases and you have to be very careful when shooting mm -hmm. a new camera because if someone comes off the street and sees that, it's a very bad thing. <laughs> you, you, you hit on a great, so. great point here too. You wanted to photograph it like the person, yes. Mark, we talked about before, this customer that's gonna buy the camera, which I yeah. think is really, really cool. Um, let's see some of the shots with the models. Very, very cool stuff yeah, in, in the environment. The, we got the, the camera in the model's hands. One thing that I, I think is kind of a testament to just how fun this camera is to work with is the models were asking about it when they could purchase it. Mm -hmm. They said they had a blast with it. We had this model, Lizzie, um, shooting, gosh, we started this shot at probably 6 in the morning. I and remember, you, guys you woke me up so early. darn early. <laughs> uh -huh. Because yeah. I was afraid of other people being on location at the park and seeing the camera. So we got up super early for this shot. We got a real con fun canoe involved. This was on uh, Grapevine Lake. So mm -hmm. we had lots of color, lots of vibrancy, really pretty Great, great tip, though. If you want great photos, you got to get up early morning. That's it's on. And you want to shoot at dusk, right? The best Absolutely. times. They call that golden right? light, right? God, I love the golden light. And then you got a picture so. uh, that we, we kind of set up in the studio, right? Yeah, we did this one in studio. Mm -hmm. Trying to showcase the selfie mode. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's interactive. This model is, is such a ham, her name's Crystal, mm -hmm. and she just took that selfie mode and really owned it. <laughs> so we got a lot, a lot of fun shots of her doing that. And in this, we wanted you to get video clips, right? Absolutely. Um, very important to show off the video capabilities of the camera. Mm -hmm. Sean did a great job in, in yeah. a video project, but yours was more targeted towards that social person, that person that wants mm -hmm. to get a video out. So we asked you to shoot horizontal, vertically, right. the way things are being posted these mm -hmm. days online. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the movie capabilities, how easy that was. Yeah, I was really wildly impressed with it. When I shoot video, it's always flat profile and picture control, so mm -hmm. you can have some leeway in post. This was with the smoke bombs. <laughs> and Lots of smoke bombs. What's amazing to me is the camera is still able to autofocus as I'm shooting this, um, and it's not getting you know the smoke in it's the way. It's not right. getting lost in it. It's not getting lost in it. So it was really incredible how easily that focused. You know, slow motion video always has such a cool vibe about it. With fashion photography, we're always shooting slow motion. Mm -hmm. um, this camera really excels in that area. And and back in the day, Sean Dixie, you know, video's got to be shot horizontal, but that's not so today anymore, right. is it? So we then tasked you to do something that may you may not do that <laughs> often is shoot some vertical video. Yes. So so we. That's got a nice fun. scene. What do we get here? We get some yes, confetti exploding. Yes, we had exploding. a confetti bomb. <laughs> 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 we had all kinds of cool props for this shoot. So we had the confetti going. Um, I think we did three different tries on this, and every shot that we did looked really great. I mean, these are amazing. And this was shot story. in the slow motion mode that actually yes. creates that slow motion file and camera. In fact, all of these were, right, right. These are right out of the camera. So I didn't do any post production or anything to these. These are just clips right out of the camera. And then, and you know, we have a third video coming up, and it was inspired by somebody, I believe, who was very talented, very <laughs> handsome. Was We were on the, the shoot together in this beautiful place that you selected with beautiful color graffitied walls, painted Absolutely. walls. Absolutely. And we had a model with what? A beautiful umbrella. Oh, so what did we do with that <laughs> this umbrella? This is Mike's idea. <laughs> <laughs> He's really embellishing this. I like that. <laughs> well, well, first of all, she puts you out in 95 degree weather, 200% yeah, humidity, <laughs> and we're working for 20 hours during a day. So <laughs> I just had to come up with a little bit of something. But hey, I like beautiful. That. Lots I, I of love color. the way you executed this. You really <laughs> did. And this is your idea. I'm just teasing. Oh but yeah, that was so it was. But it was it was so much fun. And I think this is the kind of thing that anybody that wants to post a little story about themselves is yeah. going to do, right? Absolutely. And and the beauty of that, Mark, is we we take a video like this, right? Yep. We have the ability to now transfer it to our smart device, our phones, mm -hmm. and we can now send this anywhere we want once we get it to the phone, right? It's, it's awesome. I mean, everything is just so immediate today, mm -hmm. and I think that's what these cameras are able to keep up with. Mm -hmm. So by having these functionalities, 
you're getting the best image quality, you're getting the best videos. And by the way, the, the video, I'm glad you brought that up about the slow motion. Um, you know, the phase detect autofocus that's on the sensor is what makes it possible to get videos that are so super sharp mm -hmm. and so the focusing so fine on them. So, mm -hmm. um, but to your point, uh, I mean, having the snap bridge uh, in there is, is so awesome with these cameras. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we all want to share, every one of us shares. And, and that's, I think, a big part of the way we talk about this. That we just, we share our lives, whether you're at a concert, whether you're on vacation, you know, I, my, my sister-in-law out there, I'm always seeing her posts. Um, and, um, and to be able to step up, though, to be able to use lenses, you know, that do different things and shoot differently um, yeah. to get a great look. I mean, that's so important. But what I, you know, this is what I find myself doing all the time. I take a picture that I, that I really like, uh, my kids or whatever. I, I take a lot of pictures of my kids. <laughs> I take them, I, I don't know, they're, they're, they're really cool. I love them. <laughs> 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 I, love them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful, but thanks anyway. to your wife, by the way, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, and thank you for the compliment there. But um, I take the pictures, I text the pictures. Mm -hmm. I, I take them, I send them straight to the, to the phone, and I text them to the people I want mm -hmm. to, s to show to. So it's not just only social media. Sometimes, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a client you're mm -hmm. sending it to. Sometimes so it's, it's a friend. Sometimes, you know, it's... Is is this is this the right type of picture, or, or you know, I'm just you know something a little bit more personal. You know, I, I find, especially around the holidays, the photographs I make tend to make it easier for me to give gifts because that's what I tend to share more often is <laughs> photos as gifts. Um, but um, uh, it's always so much fun. And I, I, I guys, uh, Sean Dix, I can't thank you guys enough for giving us your time and, and your insight. Uh, this is fun. I mean, this is a really fun time for us. And. You know, you've already got two great Z cameras on the market in the Z6 and Z7. You've got the versatility of high frame rates and high speed, high ISO in the Z6. And you've got really amazing commercial quality in a Z7. And now we hit home with what I think is a really great balanced camera for just about anybody um, and, and that wants that portable light compact camera to, to work with and work on the fly and share your pictures and really high resolution and 4K video, that flip screen. Um, I could probably see myself doing a few uh, <laughs> selfies. And Dixie, don't be so afraid to shoot your <laughs> selfies. It's not a problem. Um, uh, and, uh, and we're just going to have fun with this, right? Absolutely. And uh, so we can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. Um, this has been a very special segment for Nikon Live. Uh, please tune in. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be at the Jacob Javits Center live broadcasts of so many different types of photography with so many great talented artists. We thank you so much. Go out, pick up that Z50, try it out. I'm sure you're going to love it like we do. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.